So today we're going to kind of go through an introduction to drafting, what drafting is, some of the basic concepts, uh, the tools that we're going to be using. Uh, we're not using all of those, but most of those we'll use. Um, and then we'll get into some, some basic sketching to kind of catch up from last week what we missed. And then we'll go into line types, um, the, why we use different types of lines. And that was the thick and the thin that I told, told you I'd get back to. Um, and we'll do some, some basic drawing objects today. We'll take some stuff out of the cabinet and just kind of see, if, see what we would do, and then we'll see how that relates to what we're supposed to do. Okay? Any questions now? Is all of our screens supposed to look like that? Uh, they should. Mine <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> And look at someone else. <laughs> it loses some sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it lost a couple. So, yeah. If your screen doesn't show it, just look at someone else's. Or look all the way up here. <clears throat> so, what is drafting? Architecture uses drafting. Uh, drafting is like a scale models. No. Modeling. It's a drawing of an object. Yeah, it's a drawing of an object, but even more basic than that. What is it? What does that drawing do? It describes. It describes and even more basic. So the, the most fundamental thing that drafting does. Gives you an idea. Spread some idea. Express an idea. It communicates, right? It communicates with uh, via graphics. So instead of talking, we use graphics to show it, right? So what's the old saying? A picture is with a thousand, thousand words. words. Thousand words, right? That's how true is that? Pretty true. Pretty true, right? So. What's that? Does anyone know what that is? Da Vinci? Yeah, it's a drawing by Da Vinci, right? Does anyone know what it is? Can you kind of tell what it is? Yeah, I heard it. It's a glider, right? Here's where the wings would go, and he sits and lays down in here. Did Da Vinci speak English? No. No. Did he write English? No. How long ago did he live? Four hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, it was in the 1700s, something like that. A long time ago in Italy. But we can draw, we can do this. There was a TV show on a couple years ago where they would take his sketches and actually make the stuff and make it work. So completely graphical. You don't need it. You don't need language. You don't. I mean, that that's the language. Um, what about that? Uh, this is more modern, formal drawing that we do. But we can take that, send it anywhere in the world, and they'll make it perfect. They can make one of them in China, one in Mexico, one in Canada, one here. Put them next to each other, they'll all, they'll all be exactly the same. We're really close. <clears throat> and there's no letters or other communication besides just numbers on it, right? But it's a, that's what we need. That'll go. It's just like writing a contract, but now we're drawing a contract. <clears throat> so, that's kind of everything we need. We're not going to talk about what these little boxes are. Uh, that's a little bit, that's more for machinists and things. Um, if you do more of the drafting classes in the drafting five class, we really go in depth with them. The drafting 44 class, which I think is now being added to the welding certificates, um, you'll kind of get a little basic overview of what that what that is. Um, so why is drafting important? Because without it, we wouldn't have things made. Yeah, it's hard to get things made, right? Are there people that make things without drawings? No. Sure. Yeah. There's cabinet, cabinet guys, 
Odds of them don't use drawings. They use sticks they mark on, and, and that's how they do it. They don't use drawings. But that's a kind of a one-off thing, right? Do you want to have two or ten or a thousand made? You need some drawings, right? So, what? If you want them the same. Yeah, if you want them the same. So you want them to uh, take this piece here and this piece here and just put them together. <clears throat> so, also we want to be able to, to, to not have to explain little things. So, language. Um, and it's more precise, right? You try to tell someone to do something and you come back and it's not right. It's not like you told them. But if you give them a drawing, there's no excuse. There I go, drawing upside down. Sloppy little piece there. How many words would it take to describe that? You're going to write down a description of that little L shaped piece. How many words would that take? A fair number. Right, try and count it out. Think about how many words that would be to do it. I also want to count you on the fingers. At least 14, 15 words. Probably more into the 20s, something like that. Mm -hmm. right. An L shaped piece that is two inches high and two inches high and two inches wide, with, uh, with, the, with the bottom piece being one inch. So I'm already at 20. So <clears throat> now I put a hole in it. Right? Now I have to put, I have to give those. Oh, I forgot the, the depth of it, right? Yeah. So that's a few more words to be, begin. The diameter of it. So, just by adding, and that's a real simple piece, and now we're already up into 50, 60 words for a little L shaped piece with a hole in it. So imagine that piece. Well, you'd have to do to describe that piece. And for a machine shop, that's an easy piece. I've done stuff that's a lot more difficult than that. Think about what it'd be to try and draw just this and describe it with words. Right? Try and tell it how to do that, those curves and, and stuff. Never mind what all these stuff on the inside. Or all the little stuff on top of a soda can, or even the tab itself. How are you going to describe this little tab in words and get them to make it, right? But drawing, no problem. <clears throat> so in drafting, we have two basic types of projections. We have perspective and parallel projection. Perspective is real life. Light comes in towards our eye, it all kind of angles in. And so things, when they're further away, we get smaller. Um, do we do this in mechanical drafting? No. No. Um, oh, let me step back. Step. Drafting has three main areas. We have civil drafting, which is the ground and everything underneath the ground. So roads, pipes, mining, all of that, that's civil. We have architectural, which is buildings. And we have mechanical, which is everything that goes on the ground, in the ground, into a building, or inside a building. So mechanical is the actual pipe itself, the, uh, the light, the street light thing, the, the doors, the windows, the, the steel the framing. Um, the pieces, AC units, desks, cars, everything else is mechanical. 
So it's like buildings <coughs> itself is architectural, the ground is civil, but everything else is mechanical. And so mechanical, we don't do this. Who does perspective? Architectural. Yeah, architectural people. They have to justify it somehow, right? Drawings are easy, <coughs> let's do it hard, make it do a perspective, that's kind of hard, so we can get paid some money. That'll take some time. And then people all across the way in the art building, they do perspective stuff because it looks good. We stay with parallel projection because now parallel, we can measure everything. That's what we care about. We care about you know, draw lines and measuring them. <coughs> so with these, we have a couple of things. We have the observer's eyes. So where the eye is, where, where are you looking at it from? <laughs> which is also called the station point. We have the object. So how is the object turned? So if I have this piece, I have my eye. How am I looking at this piece? And how is it positioned? Is it like this? Is it like this? Is it like that? Is it like that? How am I looking at it? And how is it positioned, right? Those two kind of figure out the orientation of it. We have the projection plane, so that's kind of where the paper goes, and it, you can show it a lot easier here. It trying to get to the size based on how closer far you are. With parallel, you can't really see it, but think of it like this: if I had a hole in the paper, a hole in the paper. Imagine my paper had a hole in it. If the part was right next to the paper, it's big, right? If the part is further away from the paper, and I look through that same hole, it looks smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the projection plane. So where are we putting this? Are we going to put it right next to it, make it the full size? Or are we going to push it back and make it smaller? Or are we going to put this out in front and make it bigger? Sometimes you have something really small, maybe like... like Say this little piece here. Going on this piece of paper. If we do it full size, it'd be really small. So we can blow it up, and make it bigger on the piece of paper, so it's easier to see. But if I was going to draw this, I'm going to have to make it smaller to fit on the paper, right? Even if I go to a bigger size paper, I'm not going to go to a paper that's this big. So. <clears throat> That's where the projection point is. That controls how big the object is. And then the projector, so that's just kind of connecting <coughs> your part through the projection plane back to the eye. So the main thing is, how is this orientated? Where is that projection plane? And then the, the projectors kind of show you where the part is on it. Just remember those, those are on the test, they're on your quiz, so remember this, these things. Remember they're here in this lecture so you can come back and see them. <coughs> so back to projecting types. There was the perspective, which we're not doing. And then we have the parallel. And so in parallel we have oblique and we have orthographic. Oblique means that we're going to look at it straight, and then we're just going to draw some lines back in an angle to give it that depth. So now it kind of looks like a 3D object. You want to know what the difference between the cavalier and the cabinet oblique is? Yeah. One's more isometric. No. So isometric looking at it from the corner. Oblique looking at it straight. One's more exaggerated. Yeah, one's further back than the other, right? Yeah. But you said exaggerated, it's actually the opposite. If I, if I measure this, and I measure that, they're the same. So if this block, that height and that depth are the same amount, 
when I draw it with the correct depth, it looks like this is further than that is, right? Because we're used to things that go away from us being smaller or shorter. And so even though this is actually the right distance, it doesn't look right. So cavalier means the distance going back is the correct full depth. Cabinet means the distance going back is anything less than full depth. So it might be three quarter, it might be half, but it's not the full depth. This angle doesn't have to be 45 degrees. If we want to see more of the side of the part, we can do it 15 or 30 degrees. If we want to see more of the top, we do it 60 or 75 degrees. If we want to see equal, we'll do it at 45. So that's used kind of to show things off a little bit, more of a pictorial thing. <clears throat> in orthographic, we have isometric. This is the one that we use most often if we want to show things in 3D. Because now we can see the top, the front, and the side. We can measure on all three of those. It's all full, full size. That's just looking at it from the corner. Questions? Any questions? We're going to do a lot of isometric. Everything we do in the class will either be going from isometric to multi view or from multi view to isometric. That's going to be pretty much everything we do after this week. Okay? You look at our book, it either has multi view and a blank isometric. Symmetric and a blank multi. -view. <clears throat> so isometric, what it is is if we have our horizontal line, we have vertical lines for things that were vertical. So if we look over here, vertical line stays vertical. Lines that were horizontal. Either here or here, now we're at 30 degrees. So that's 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees, and vertical. And on the drawings we're doing on the graph paper, the graph lines are at 30 degrees also. So anything that's on the 30 degree or the vertical, we can measure. Okay? We'll talk a lot more about this next week. Then we have the multi-view. There's first angle and third angle. You know what we do? Yeah. Third angle? We do third angle. Don't do that. On the back there's a red poster. The first angle is crossed out. Don't do it. In the US we do third angle. Other countries, Canada, Europe, pretty much everyone else does first angle. I don't know why, it's backwards. Third angle is what we do. And what it is is basically this. Uh, my part's going all over the place. We take a part, we have a little glass box, we put the part in the box, we, we look at it, we draw what we see. From the front, we look at it from the side, we draw what we see. We look at it from the top, we draw what we see. Then we just open it up, and there's our views. Okay? And they're lined up perfectly. Because what was close to the front, so this edge here was closer to the front of the box. When I open the box, now it's still close to the front, right? It just kind of hinges up. So this box over here, we have lots of little pieces. I have a little foam cutting thing, so we'd actually cut uh, the pieces that are in the book out of foam and stick them in the box also. So this is here, 
uh, we can wipe off the pen that's on it and use other markers to draw on it to see if you have if you have problems. Okay. So this is another tool we can use if you're not getting stuff. If you want to go over and take a look at it later? Go for it. I recommend it. So we use third angle, okay? Also on the, the poster back there, it has a little piece and it has an isometric and a multi-view, and it has it color coded. So this face is red, and it's red up here, kind of thing. So you can kind of see how it goes, okay? Questions? Yes, no. If you have questions, ask it, because if you have a question, Probably four, ten other people have the same question. Okay? No? All right, so let's talk about some equipment. Some of the stuff we need. Uh, we need a drawing board, something to draw on, right? Don't draw on the book. I know you're going to be tempted. I'm just going to open the book and I'll draw right in here, right? What happens if you try and draw on the book? Goes to the next page. Yeah, you can make some lines on the next page. But if you're trying to draw in here, what's happening? Oh, well, it's not flat. It's not flat. If I try and put this, it's gonna see. Look at it. It's bending it up. I'm gonna have to try and get it all down here. Also, it's gonna move around on me. So, tear it out of the book. Make a copy of it. We want to be able to put it on the drawing board. And what did I put it? We have tape, tape it down to your drawing boards. Next week I'll show you how to tape it down. Um, because next week is when we actually start using triangles and, and drawing. So you want to tape it down so that we things stay straight. And then we can use this guy. Right? What's this? T-square. T-square, right? It's not an axe, it's a T-square. Put it inside the desk. There's a space between your desk. It's for your T-square. Cool. <clears throat> Are we supposed to buy one of those? No. Back. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then we need a compass. We talked about that. Yep. Um, actually, I've got a bunch of other stuff. Triangles. Oh, what's the lettering guide? A little tiny piece of plastic with holes. Lettering in. guide is this little thing right here. This is the lettering guide. And all we care about on it. are these holes right here. That's all we care about is these holes. If you buy it, there's a little book that comes with it yeah. telling you how to use this middle part. Throw that away, throw that middle part away. <laughs> I, d I don't know how to use that middle part. I never <laughs> learned. This is what you need. This is for like if you're doing fractions or you're doing italics, you need to have different widths between your lines. That's for architectural people and stuff. Mechanical, we do decimals, so everything's the same height. So we just use this. These holes are spaced an eighth, an eighth of an inch apart. So for text, which is an eighth of an inch high, now we can get easy guidelines for our text. When we get to doing sections, the section lines, eighth of an inch apart, now we can draw a lot of them that are perfectly parallel without having to move a bunch. You just move it back and forth and get a bunch of parallel lines that are perfect. So it's worth the two bucks because when we get to do the hatches, especially if I see a bunch of lines that are kind of all over the place that aren't even, this is me off. <laughs> <laughs> when I get mad, everyone gets bad grade. Oh god! Just one little thing makes your drawing look a lot nicer. If you look at it, if someone looks at your drawing the first time, they go, "Oh, it looks pretty good." Guess what? 
they're going to not have any problems with it. If they notice things like <coughs> dirty corners and line spaces that are bad and it's blurry, then it's, okay, now what else is wrong with this? Right? And I'll see if it's off by a degree. If two lines are supposed to be parallel and it's off by a degree or two, I'll see it. Trust me. So you want to take care to, to get it right. Um, we already talked about that. No, we're going to talk, let's go on to the next one. Um, so mechanical pencils we talked about a little bit last week. Um, if you want to brush, if you're going to brush, that's good. Yeah. Because you don't want a bunch of eraser things on your desk, and you don't want to move, use your hand to, to, to brush off the eraser, because then it's just a smear everywhere. You don't want to blow on it, because then you get spit all over your paper. Um, so a nice little brush is nice sometimes. Um, even like a little paintbrush, a little cheapy paintbrush or something. It doesn't have to be one of the good drafting brushes. It's something that's get your eraser pieces off the paper. Um, already said, a good eraser, the white one. Don't use the pink one. Pink one will turn your paper pink. White one will leave it white. Okay. Um, and it actually erases what? Yeah. Um, and then I don't think I have another paper. But templates. They have tons of templates for things. The one that you're going to need is an ellipse template. So, at least you and your, between you and a friend or the person that's next to you, at least one of you buy this. Um, and like I said on the thing, it's um, should not this one. Put it on the back. This this is a metric one. Um, by an inch one. But it should say ellipse template or an isometric ellipse template. We don't want a metric one. Uh, no, get an inch one. So it'll say isometric ellipse. Make sure it says isometric ellipse, not just ellipse. It's like this one, those are those are different types of ellipses. You can see this ellipse is totally a different shape than that ellipse, right? Yeah. That's not what you want. You want them to be all exactly the same shape, just different sizes. And so, when we get to doing circles in isometric, we'll, I'll talk about how to use it. But get one for at least a, a couple people or to share. You don't want to have to wait for eight people to use it before you get it. Okay? Can you buy those on campus? Uh, yeah, bookstore has them. Also, it's 35 degrees, 16 minutes is what it should say also. I put that on Moodle on the list. But they also make templates for all the kinds of other stuff, like architecture, they put like doors and bathtubs and trees. And the thing that you're gonna to go to do a lot that you don't wanna draw and have to measure out each time you need a template for. Um, Run it for everything. Uh, we have protractors. So the, um, this class, we're not really going to use protractor. Um, when we get to doing dimensioning, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. But everything in here is gonna, we're going to draw based on grids, so it's not really a big deal. Any questions? So, if you want to get a little parallel edge table, or I know some people that'll they'll get little cheap ones, but even these are like, I've seen people get really good deals, get them cheap, but the good ones like this are like 60 bucks, so I wouldn't say go out and buy one unless you're planning on doing a lot of hand drawing, um, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, these are called, do you know what that's called? Yeah, it's a draft machine with a mechanical arm. And that's really good because at the end, 
you've got a built-in protractor and built-in scales. So if you're drawing something that you need to make a certain size, you've got your scales built into it and a protractor and everything that's really easy. Um, not that many people do hand draft anymore, so they're kind of... We, we had all the old tables a couple years ago, and we had pieces for some of these, but we didn't have them on the tables. Um, and these are called R machines, and these still... They still sell these, and they're still about 300 bucks. At least. So if you want to do them, this would be. These are we're going to a couple thousand dollars. Um, I don't know why I'd spend that much money. Maybe if I was doing architecture, I was just wanting to hand lay out a bunch of stuff. But I'd rather use a computer <laughs> for big stuff. Um, if you want to use learn the computer, drafting 4A is offered every semester twice. So. I would suggest do that. Uh, so here's what we were I was talking about. The pencils, you can use the wood pencils. Um, either get your own sharpener or use sharpener there. Uh, this is the, the thick lead holder that I was talking about that I've got tons of lead for. I already had one person take me up on some. Um, <clears throat> so if you get this, I'll give you lead, I'll give you a, a sharpener. Um, not a nice sharpener like this, but a little one that you stick it in and turn it. Um, these ones are, are really nice also. Um, and then the thin lit, the, the regular mechanical pencil. And if you get the mechanical, you need to get two, a thick and a thin, like I was talking about before. Where do you get those pencils at? Anywhere. I can't find them anywhere. Michaels. Anywhere well, should have them. Staples. They'll all, they'll all, they'll, they might not have them listed as different ones. Yeah, real good and they might not look like this, but even the cheapy ones. You can't find a thin as, one. As long as you can find one, because usually on the, like on up here, it'll say like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Right. As long as you can find two different widths. Oh, okay. That's fine. And it could be the cheapy ones, the, the $2 right. ones, yeah. or whatever. Or it could be these, and these are like 10 bucks each. So, these cheapy ones are fine. So, if you got that, that'll, that'll work. 0.7 and 0.5? Yeah. As long as, you, as long as we can tell the difference between them. If we get going and you notice you can't tell the difference between the two, then you might want to go to a 0.3 for your thin one. So, questions? All right, with pencils, we have different leads. Is it really lead? No, it's graphite. No, it's graphite, right? And, and what? Clay. Graphite and clay. And so by mixing the graphite and the clay differently, we get either hard lead or soft lead. More clay means it's harder. More graphite means it's softer. <clears throat> Which ones do we use? Hard, medium. <clears throat> we use between medium and hard, right? Mm -hmm. Do we use soft leads? No. No, we, use, we leave that for the guys over in art. Charcoal, basically. Um, between medium and hard, it depends on your hand. And there are some people I know that have to use a 7H. Because their hand, they push so hard that a 7H makes a really dark line. Um, I know other people that are 4H, you can barely see when they draw it. And they need to use like an F. It depends on how hard you press on the paper. Um, and so usually with hard leads, use it for diagrams and things where you want to have real crisp, clean lines. Um, but most of the time, mediums. When I was going to school, we started with a 4H and then kind of moved from there. Um, what you have in your regular pencil you buy from the store is what? Uh, FQ, HP. A 2H. If you go to the store, it's 2H. That's what you use on Scantron and stuff. <clears throat> so 2H, H, kind of, it really depends on you. Um, and a little bit of work, not pressing real hard and kind of just doing it hard enough to get it. You can get by with a, a soft lead. If you want to press hard, you use a, a, a harder lead. If you get the mechanical pencil, or the, the thick lead, I've got the whole range in the back. They're probably 30 years old, but they're in the back. 
uh, but they're still, they still work. Um, and better than the one that came in his pencil. So the one that came in his pencil snapped, we're trying to sharpen it, the other one worked fine. Um, so, questions? So triangles, you need at least one, I recommend two. They don't have to be this big, they can be the smaller ones. But look at how big your paper is. Most of the part, most of the drawings are kind of it's broken up half the page. But we want to be able to go that far. If you do what? So we want to be able to kind of connect this far. So we want to be able to line it up with a point on the top and a point on the front. Because if it's longer, you can still keep it off the, bo the bottom of the page. I can line it up and have it off the bottom of the page. It doesn't hurt anything. Or it off the top of the page once I tear it out of the book. And so bigger is better. I'd rather have a big one that I can line up easily than a little one that I can't go all the way to the top to the bottom. Because then, then it makes checking it hard. That's when you start making mistakes. So, and the 3060 is good because now Excellent. you have a long one and you have a short one. Right? So, if you're going to get just one, get a 3060 um, or, or get both. One of the reasons we want to tape, the, tape it down. It's like this shows, if I take the, tri the T square, line up here, I can put the triangle on it, and I can just slide this back and forth, and my line will stay parallel. That only works if we tape the paper down to the desk. If the paper's just sitting on the desk, it doesn't work. So that's why we're going to go over taping the paper down next week, using your T square. Sometimes you want to do lines that are parallel, or you want lines that goes perfectly up and down. And so instead of having to, to line your, your triangle up with the grid every time, you can just lay it down the T-square, you know it's perfect, and draw. Especially if things don't line up with the dots on the grid, <laughs> which it doesn't always line up with the grid lines. And if it's off, I'll tell, I can tell. So tape it down, use your triangle, keep it straight. Question, questions? And that's where having two comes in handy, also. So if I have two, I can line this one up with my line, put this one on top of it, and I have a perpendicular line, right? Fancy. So that's the kind of compass we want, right? The bow compass. <clears throat> if we're doing stuff that's really big, we can do a beam compass. Like that. Don't get that kind. See, the, see, there's no wheel here. It's just kind of by friction holding it apart. If you get that, you're going to draw spirals, which aren't good. I mean, you can draw a circle with them, but you have to be really careful, and it takes a lot of practice. I have tr trouble drawing circles with these sometimes. I've been using the compass a long time. So don't get that. Don't get the little cheap ones with the little arm on the side and the, that whole little pencil. Don't get one of those. If you get one of those, I'm going to throw it out of the room. 
Not even an asterisk, just pick it up and chuck it. So, you ever else put your hands down? I'll say a compass and I'll toss it. No, you guys, are you guys dead? You're awake? No one laughed. I was throwing it that way though, right? So, you guys are safe. <clears throat> dividers. Anyone know what dividers are for? Besides reading what it says on the thing. It's like a compass, like the kind of compass I just told you not to get. But there's no lead in it. It's both, they're both sharp. Just measure two points. Yeah, just, you can take it, put it on a scale, and then put it on your drawing to make sure it's right. Or you can use it to divide things. It's kind of the the, law, the, the hard way to divide things. But you could kind of take it and kind of go like this. Oh, that's too far. Join it a little bit. Start over, try it again. Figure out how to divide things. Uh, it's a lot easier way, which we'll do. We'll do it on Thursday. I'll show you that the easy way to divide things. It's real easy. <coughs> um, so, see kind of how it oh. kind of turn them. So now you can just find equal spaces. So that's kind of the, the long way. <clears throat> this is our bookstore, and that, or at least how it was a couple semesters ago, where okay. things were: razor shields, the lettering guides, protractor er, things, ellipse templates. Uh, you don't need triangles. Don't see these are the compasses. Don't buy. Buy this compass, not that compass. Okay. Good, bad, good, <laughs> throw out the room. <laughs> Don't worry about drawing draft buying drafting tape or dots. I've got a whole case of dots. Each one of these things have I don't know. Five hundred dots in it. And, and I've been using the same box for two semesters now and still got a few in there. I've got a whole flat. So don't waste your money. Questions? Alright. So then when you, get, when you start actually drawing, what we draw on is called the media. And so we have regular paper or bond. Uh, it's nice, it's thick, it's tough, it's easy to draw on. But it doesn't last a long time. You can get torn and get some water on it, it gets messed up really bad. Uh, we have vellum. What's vellum? It's really, really nice. It used to be made out of sheep stomachs or something like that. Now it's artificial, but it's kind of transparent. It's really nice. You can still draw on it really good, but it's thin. Water tracing doesn't paper? ruin it. Is it like tracing paper? No, tracing paper is super thin. Just Vellum is what? Vellum slightly thicker. Yeah, it's, it's a little less translucent. Yeah, if if you're going to be doing a lot of drawing by hand, usually you'd use vellum because it it saves very well. I've seen vellum drawings that are um, forty years, old. fifty years old. Actually, where is that? This drawing was on vellum that I saw. It was ink on vellum. Look at the date of that drawing. Yeah, 1913. 1913. Almost 100 years ago. I took this picture um, last March. And I actually held this drawing in my hand. And that looks pretty close to what we're going to do, except we're not going to do it on vellum. I mean, it's the way that the drawing was done, if I was doing it on CAD, it would be almost exactly the same, except for this kind of stuff in the, in the holes. Yeah, I see that. But these three views, almost exactly how I would do it. 
I, mean, I, I wouldn't use fractions, I'd use decimals, I'd move my, dis my dimensions around a little bit. But the actual geometry itself, exactly how I would do it. And that's 100 years ago, almost. So, it, it holds up pretty good. Well, last. This pencil would be a little faded, but it's still. I've, I've, I've used drawings that are 60 years old that are pencil on vellum. Yeah? Um, I have a meeting at 2 o'clock. Okay, there you go. Um, and then we have tracing cloth. If you're just going to draw, if you want to put it over something and then draw. You can trace with vellum also. You would do something like this, which is the light table. The fill is all covered up. You have to turn a light on behind it, then you can draw over it. Um, so that's our paper. When we draw, when we, when we write, we use vertical letters, just like that, eighth of an inch tall, block letters. Don't use italics. Don't slam them. That's architecture. We're not being fancy. We're being readable. Mechanical. Yep. Eighth of inch high, all caps. No lowercase, there's no point. Okay? We want to make it stand out, easy to read. Okay? Questions? And no, I'm not going to test you on your lettering. Because I would fail that test. <clears throat> so paper sizes. This. 8.5 by 11 is an A-sized paper. You take two of these, put them next to each other, B-sides. Flip those up, or get, or over the long side, you get C. So you take small number, double it. So the long number goes to the short side, double it. Double. Double. Mechanical, we use A, B's, and C's usually. For something like a structural job or something like that, then they might use C's and D's. Um, I don't know if mechanical ever gets these. anything I've ever done. Parts go on A and B. Assemblies, B's and C's. And some places I go, no matter what size you actually draw it, on the computer, they'll print it out on an A size. Or they print everything on a B size, no matter what size title block you put it on. So I like B <clears throat> because on a page, size, look how big the title block is. It takes up almost a little over a third of a page. right? Just the, the basic information about the drawing. If we go to a B size, that title block stays the same size, but now our paper got a lot bigger, got twice as big, so we have a lot more space to work with. If we go to a C size, this is still the same size, but now we have even more space to work with. So for me, unless it's a really small part, things go on a B size. If you're on the computer, that's really easy to decide. You draw it, and then you decide, okay, what page, what size do I want to put it on? If you're doing it by hand, you have a little bit of pre-planning to do. Okay, I've got this part. I'm going to draw it out. What size paper am I going to put it on? What scale am I going to make it? Right? And then I can start drawing. <clears throat> Metric, they have kind of sizes also. Start with A4 and then A3, kind of corresponding back almost to what the A, B, C, and D are. Okay. Yeah? 
Nick, buy this paper? No. We're going to use the paper out of the book. Okay. This is just for information. It'll be on the test. Questions? This is just for information. No. We're not doing big things. Um, let's take a break now. We'll come back. We'll get into the, the next part. So take 10 minutes. We'll come back at 2 o'clock.